Good afternoon, everyone. Happy to be here today. We are going to talk today about future-proofing your test cells, thinking about how to be sustainable as technologies grow and as your functions and performance have to grow. So specifically about uh, engine controls and building test cells that are sustainable and future-proofed. And I'm Vince Sochi. I lead the platform division at LHP Engineering Solutions. The key question you should be thinking about right now is, what can I do today to support my needs both today and tomorrow in my test cells? And we're gonna look at three key aspects today. We're gonna to look at some of the framework you need to work in. What are the constraints? What are the trends? What are the requirements you're working in? And then we're gonna look at the solutions. What are the workflow tools? What are the sample ar architectures? And then we're gonna give some advice about some best practices and look at some of the case studies as we go forward. Good to go? All right, so as we look at the trends and constraints, you need to think about how test cells are changing nowadays. Now, it used to be that test cells were used in testing. And once you had a product, you went and qualified and validated and did all the design robustness testing there. But now you're actually using it in the life cycle. So all the way back in the R&D, your test cells are getting utilized. And you're us utilizing them in areas like proof of concept, where you're trying to show that the technology and architectures and algorithms you're working on are going to work. And LHP has done a lot working in rapid controls prototyping. You saw some of that in an earlier presentation we did here, and I'll mention that case study later on in this presentation. From a business standpoint, you're also looking at your technology demonstration. You're trying to show that your new materials will work, that your controls, your methods, all of that technology that you're working on can be demonstrated and proven out. And that's important because when you're looking at your funding decisions, you're going to be making your make-buy decisions, your go-no-go -no -go decisions early on. And you're able to do that in your test cell if you have good capabilities. You're also going to be looking at design optimization. The, the one example I'm going to show is a variable valve profile that is used early on in your development to prove out how you could maximize and optimize your performance. We've also done things like uh, for, for GDI, uh, direct injection in involvement, you could do your profiling in your test cell if your instrumentation is capable of supporting that. Then you're also looking at the complexity. The trends nowadays are that you're getting more and more complexity in your system. You're going to have higher electronics, more deep and broad software content covering a lot of different functionality. You're going to have uh, regulations you need to test. You're going to have to test your safety critical operations, make sure that you have built robust designs and have fully vetted all of your, your testing that needs to be done. And we're also moving towards platform-based designs where you can do full lifecycle support by a vendor who integrated that support together and sustaining that as you go forward. Now that's very helpful when you're looking at integrating larger complex systems that others have done. When you look at some of the instrumentation that is done out here, it's great if you could bring that forward, instrument it into your test cell, and then be able to support that as you go forward. And then finally, we're seeing a great trend in reducing costs. Even with higher complexity, you're looking at how do I drive my costs down from launch through operations all the way through future upgrades and then being able to build that efficiency in your total solution. Now, when you look at the actual test cell, uh, how do you build that, how do you support all that capability as you build your test cell? And we looked at things like, well, you have to have great functionality, not just from the mechanical aspects of the engine test, but also the electrical, all of your controls, all of your digital, all of your communication, and then you need to marry all of the systems around it into it things like your air fuel, all of your, uh, your uh, load controls, uh, your cooling systems, those ha all have to get integrated. You also want to have flexibility in your system. Whatever engine test system you build, you want to be able to carry that through other testing profiles like your hot and your cold tests. You want to do your performance validation. You want to be able to do all of your regulatory testing. Um, 
anything you need to do to validate a safety critical system. You also want it to be adaptable. Um, things change, right? You're going to have I.O. that changes. You're going to have uh, the need to change the future model years of all your controls, all your systems. You need to be able to adapt and, and uh, upgrade as, as your future goes forward. Uh, and that also includes your testing. There's going to be cases where you're going to be doing a model year testing in a test cell, and then you also want to be able to go and do regression tests for previous uh, test cells or model years that you, you have done and other software releases. So you want to be able to adapt to that. And then we're a big advocate for building visibility into your system. And visibility comes from things like data analytics, uh, having some sort of visual metrics on, on what you're building. So we build diagnostics and analytics and prognostics into our test cell systems to enable you to, to have that visibility. And then also maintainability, you need a, a system that's modular, it could be repairable, it could be calibratable. I mean, a, a key element of your test cell is to prove that your test cell equipment is calibrated and able to you know, prove out the, uh, the system is, is operating as you expect it to be. And as we're finding as we go forward, one of the problems we have with test cells, especially legacy ones, is that nobody could reproduce it. There's a test cell, somebody walks into, there's one guy in the plant who knows how it works, and we can never create it somewhere else. Uh, so we look at multiplicity, the ability to replicate and transfer that system to other arenas. So this is an example of a test cell. This is a variable valve uh, platform. So from a mechanical standpoint, you have your hydraulics and your valve and your reservoir. Uh, and that's an example of one that we've built. Now, LHP, our business, is known for our ability to get in early on and build uh, engine controls through research, development, and test, uh, doing the rapid controls prototyping. And we have a flagship product that you'll see in our booth called Panthera, which is our rapid controls prototyping suite. And one thing you might see odd about this slide is that we have logos from very uh, important partners. Uh, we are an alliance partner for NI, we are a partner for MathWorks, and we are a partner with uh, SAE. And having relationships with those entities enables us to bring their great technologies and processes and, and standards forward into great things that we're able to do for our customers. Our footprint is pretty broad, covers the entire US, also covers some, uh, some international areas. We are based out of Indiana. We do have offices here in Michigan. Um, and we're, we're pretty, pretty big in the organization. Now, when we look at our uh, tools and our workflow, we have looked specifically across embedded controls development, and we said we want tools and processes that will accelerate the development of embedded controls. So we looked at all the phases of the V, and we said, well, uh, the early end, you want rapid controls prototyping, both in the model in, in the loop environment, software in the loop environment, and all the way to the processor in the loop environment. And then, when you move forward into test, you want to be able to do your hardware in the loop platform as well as your environment in the loop and customer in the loop as we go forward. So we built an entire integrated workflow around that. Now when we dive into a test cell, we build kind of, this is a sample architecture of what we would put into a test cell. Some of this might look familiar. Obviously you start with your engine and you often have some load attached to it. So whatever your engine is, whatever your load is, that's kind of your foundation. Then you build your cooling around it, your fuel around it, and your air handling around it. Now, depending on what you're trying to test, depending on what you're trying to integrate, depending on what you're responsible for in that test cell, you're going to have a series of sensors and actuators that you're going to drive. And that's part of that architecture that you're going to have to put into your total solution. And then this is really the meat of what LHP puts onto your test cell. We start with a control platform. Sometimes that's integrated with other uh, vendors that come in. You know, we're partners with NI, we're partners with other vendors. We integrate that in. We often have to put a signal conditioning hardware layer to tie to from the DAC system down to the, uh, the actual sensors and actuators we're driving. And then you start putting the blocks on that do the functionality you need. So you might have 
uh, some physical modeling software in case there's something that's not in your test cell that you have to model and simulate. You might tie that in there. You might have some combustion system software so you have to do combustion analysis on your engine. Perhaps you have uh, some calibration and test software you need to run. And that could be added on. And then kind of the heart of running automated tests is our automation software. You could do scripted tests, you could do manual tests, you could do regression tests. Uh, as you might be aware, test cell time is pretty valuable. This equipment costs a lot of money to operate, so you want to be able to take advantage of that by automating some of your tests. I had mentioned Panthera. Panthera is our flagship product. It is designed to accelerate your model controls development by bringing that Simulink experience on real-time hardware, specifically National Instruments hardware, and that has become a very important tool for model-based development, especially in test cells. And we're, we're getting great opportunities to utilize that. And then anytime you have a software package that runs Simulink models on real-time hardware, well, you're gonna need some real-time hardware to run on. So we have a couple of these that are here today to look at in, in the show floor. Uh, this is one of them. This is a rapid prototype unit that does our, an engine control. You can see that operating right here at booth 8050. Uh, here are some bigger systems, so if, you, so if you need an 8 or a 12 cylinder engine or you need a full R&D system with full access to do um, fault injection and, uh, and other data analytics, uh, you'll get the larger system. There's also one that we don't show here that is kind of this guy's little brother. Um, that's our RCP evaluation kit and that's over there for you to take a look at as well. And you can actually take one of those home and, and do your modeling and development right on that. Uh, as you grow into the larger side, on the left side, or the right side of the V, you're going to be doing some hill testing. And we have a hill test platform that you're going to be able to go see. Uh, we don't have it here today, but we definitely have some videos and some data sheets and, and other information on it. But that allows you to do uh, full testing uh, right inside that test cell. You can uh, get intimate with your hardware and drive, uh, inject signals and do full uh, profile development. Now your Hill software, um, and any software you're gonna run on your test, so test cell, you wanna have a couple of modes. You wanna be able to have a manual mode where it looks like you're the user embedded in your system. And this is an example of a manual screen where you would drive the engine just like you were driving it out in the, out in the real world. So we give the, uh, the dashboard and environments to do that. Then when you look in the test workflow, there's several elements that you wanna integrate into that. First is having that manual GUI so that you can go and turn signals on and off and read outputs and drive all your controls and indicators. You also want to be able to do scripted tests. So we have an environment to do that built off of uh, National Instruments test stand that enables you to do that. And then of course we have our test reporting. And that's really important, especially as we're moving towards safety critical and regulatory aspects of automotive testing where you're gonna to have to maintain your artifacts of everything that you've tested. So the ability to have that integrated into a searchable database that you could then parse through and, and collect your data and analyze it. And that, that is what drives your analytics. Now when you're looking at the full test system, there's three key components we try to integrate. First is having a great user interface built off that dashboard uh, to do all your real-time uh, manual and automated testing. Then you need to have robust hardware signal interfaces. This is an example of having a common DAC platform. So you remember from that old architecture slide I showed, there is a ECS system as well as a signal conditioning backplane, and that's integrated in there as well. And then of course you have your test environment. Whatever you need to do all of your test controls, your automation, your reporting, your analytics. As some samples of what we've done. I really want to focus on one here. This is a, a rapid prototyping system we built using uh, variable valve control. So as you look at this scope, this is the output of what we were driving with an intake valve and an exhaust valve. You're able to vary the timing of that and optimize your performance. That is a great thing to do in a test cell because you're not going to go and build mass production of your system until you've optimized it. So we build a test cell around your ability to optimize uh, that development. Uh, this looks pretty crazy. 
but that's an engineer's environment, right? And when you have the ability to go and modify and change things and your engineers can dive in and do everything they want to, to change and add signals and move things around, that's, that's an engineer at work right there. Um, and then you can tie that to an engine. We have, obviously have all of your engine wiring tied together. And then there's, of course, your engine stand and your engine loading that goes on. So that's some examples of, of hardware in play. Now I want to show this because this is important as we're going forward in how test cells are being used. Uh, in the past, it's been kind of a device under test. You've had some sort of personality module that might marry up that DUT to your, your common test system. So if you have like a universal tester, you'd have a, a personality module tied to it. So when we look at our hardware in the loop tester here, and of course you're tied to some software backplane that drives it all. But where things are going now in test cells, you don't build a test cell everywhere you, you have testers. You have a test cell where it could exist, but then you have people interacting over the cloud with it. And what you may have, and we, we build this into our test systems, you have the ability to have all of your tests in a database that you can pull off the cloud, all your results end up in the cloud. You even have the ability for people who are not present at the test cell to drive your priorities, to drive the test suites that you need to be working on, to even build your test, your automated test cases, and execute them. So being able to remotely control your hardware, remotely control your test cell, and remotely run tests is becoming pretty prominent in our business. And then here's an example of the data analytics we put in. As I mentioned earlier, I'm a fan of having visualization into your system. You need to have the ability to see where you are, where you're going. And so as we look at this, we say, well, all the different test cases are in different stages. You could kind of see the bubble flowing through, through the uh, execution of tests. Very few complete. Some didn't even get run yet. And some of them are uh, are in the middle here. And you can see for every category how you want to do that. That helps you manage your test cell development and your execution of your test program. So those kind of analytics are pretty important to manage the operations of your testing. Again, big fan of, of doing those kind of analytics. And then as we go forward, we're getting involved in some of these uh, other, your, your test cell is becoming the environment now. Uh, so we're getting involved in some of these larger systems. This is M-City right here in Michigan. It's an autonomous validation facility. As we're moving forward to our autonomous vehicles, your test cell isn't just a room. Your test cell is the whole world. And you need to prove things out in a controlled environment like this before you take it out into the public. And here's, a, here's one in Columbus, Ohio, kind of a proving grounds for that. And we're starting to see that work up. LHP is actually working on um, an autonomous test facility right down there in Indiana.